Yo, good looks to DreadSock.com for sponsoring this episode of Real Notes. Anyone who has curly or locked hair like me knows how sacred a good hair wrap is. A do-rag, a wave cap, a scarf, a bandana, a bonnet, you name it. DreadSock goes a step beyond the average with silk-based head wraps that offer full protection and frizz control for curls from 2A to 4C. They're made of a blend of breathable materials to help retain hair's moisture and preserve hairstyles enough to ensure a few less trips to the salon, all held down with an elastic band strong enough to withstand even the most aggressive head trips. Whether you wear one to bed or wear one on the go, DreadSock will have you looking fresh and full. Socks come in all sizes, from shorties for short hair and beginner twists to extra large for the longer locked folks out there. Look, y'all, I've been growing my locks for nearly two decades and have been a loyal DreadSock customer for 15 years. So when I tell you these shits work, I'm dead ass. Plus, they're an independent black-owned business that's worth the time and energy. So go to DreadSock.com and use promo code CINEMASAI, that's C-I-N-E-M-A-S-A-I, for 10% off your first order. They won't fall off in your sleep, but they will keep you looking fresh. Thanks again to DreadSock for sponsoring the episode. Now let's keep this shit moving. What's good, y'all? My name is Dylan Green, and this is Real Notes, a space dedicated to blurring the cultural and artistic lines between rap and film. I'm here to chop it up with everyone from rappers and producers to journalists and video directors about their relationship to movies and how, if at all, film inspires their craft. My guest this week is Brooklyn rapper, producer, singer, and multi-instrumentalist Cisco Swank. We spoke about meeting at Pitchfork Festival, Snowfall, RuPaul's Drag Race, Akira, The Incredibles, Inception, the magic of movie scores and soundtracks, what the piano means to him, the relationship between jazz, rap, and gospel, and the creative process behind his debut solo album, More Better. Come fuck with us. What's cracking? What's up, everybody? What's up? Welcome. Welcome back. Welcome back to my show, whose name I forgot. It's called Real Notes. That's what we're here to do. We're here to do that. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, uh, I, I, uh, I was, I was in, um, I made the long trek from Brooklyn back to Long Island last night, so my brain's yeah. not all the way here. But I feel um, you. <laughs> uh, my name's Dylan Green, Cinema Sci. Um, got a lot of names, do a lot of shit. I'm around. I'm drinking a smoothie, and I don't know what this man's drinking in his cup right now, but he's got I'm a drink- really nice. Well, it's a nice, yeah. it's a nice mug. I'm drinking some chamomile tea with some honey and lemon. Nice, 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 yeah. like base, nice base beverage. You know, like you know, it's like a it's very classic. I've been trying to like not drink coffee and just like all stuff. I'm trying to be like mad, you know, mm-hmm. healthier when I can. Uh, but yeah, drinking some tea, chilling. Hey, in Brooklyn. Hell yeah. Yes, sir. Ah, man, this man, this man's a fucking like yeah, talk about talk about doing a lot of shit. Bro's a rapper, producer, multi-instrumentalist, a jazz head, fucking Brooklyn native. He never leaves the crib with his phone charged, apparently. <laughs> I, ever, my phone is literally charging as we speak. It's on twenty, it's on twenty percent. <laughs> so I was like, dang, I should have charged it before this joint. Um, but it just adds an extra layer of excitement to my life when my phone is not charged. Right. <laughs> it's you, like, you, ah, you, am I gonna make it? Maybe, maybe not. Like, we'll see. You like to live dangerously, and that's fine. We got Cisco Swank here who likes yeah, to live bro. dangerously. Um, more better will be um actually it's gonna be it's gonna be out as soon as you hear this. So go listen to more better. It's out, it's great. This this dude's yeah. dope. He's been dope for years. Um yeah, like thank you for being here, bro. Like it means a lot. <laughs> I, you've literally had so many fire people on this, and I'm like very honored, truly. So thanks for having me. Nah, man, it's my pleasure. You know, um, I don't remember when you and I first met, but it's been a little while. Um, we met. I remember we met. I we like officially met at Pitchfork Festival last year. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That was that was that was such a breakneck weekend. I'm I'm still remembering moments from Pitchfork that I like forgot about. <laughs> that whole thing was like insane. That was very insane. Um, but that was a that was a fun time. That was like my first time being at like a bigger music festival other than like afropunk um mm-hmm. that was super sick um also like first time seeing earl live which was 
amazing oh shit damn yeah yeah and like with that album in particular with um with sick in particular like that's such a mm -hmm. that's it's like such an intimate album but you're like surrounded by like 85 people not even 85 people like yeah. 285 people like just in a crowd type shit like that's oh yeah such a crazy moment like <laughs> For sure. yeah it was it was it was amazing that lineup was actually really fire there were some some sick people there yeah um, uh, uh, especially that day like I, I was, I was, I was, um, um, I was side stage for No Name that day. Oh, that, was, that was, I mean, like being side stage for a No Name show in Chicago is like, I don't mm -hmm. know how you, I don't, I mean, like I'm, I'm about, I'm, she's about to play in Brooklyn. I'm um, at Mike's. Um, yeah, for yeah, we're also and, playing like, for that too. Oh, are you crazy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> hell yeah! That's wow, gonna be hard. I'm, I'm, I'm so excited that. about that. Damn. <laughs> um, but. But I bring all that up to say that we've known each other for a little bit. I've known your music yep. for a little longer than that. Um, the evolution's right. been really beautiful. Um, I want to. I'm. I'm. Yeah. Of course. Like, there's just there's so much to talk about in terms of just like the relationship between jazz and rap, and just like all your, you know, like all the things you've done over the course of the last like four or five years. But mm -hmm. before we do that, let's talk about movies and bullshit. Um, let's do what's it. The, what's the what's the last movie or tv show you watched that you had a strong opinion about Ooh, last movie or tv show i watched oh i just saw beef how'd you like it i still haven't watched it i actually that is one of like i can say my favorite shows that i've ever seen yeah. loki i'll put that on like top five top ten also because my homie Yoshi told me to watch it um he's like bro it's sick it's just like it's a fire show um but yeah the plot was just like every episode just got more and more interesting and like outlandish even though it just started off like all right this is like normal day in the life you know two struggling people but it was just like yeah. what is going on um but yeah it's definitely like a, a binge worthy show the acting is really sick it's fire yeah, nah, I love, I love, uh, I love both Steve Yoon and Ali Wong, um, and mm -hmm. not, and and uh, not that other guy who's on there that's a bad man. Which, but, oh um, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> um, but, but I do, I do, uh, like, it's been on my list. I just want to mm -hmm. like not watch it officially. So I'm, 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 I'm gonna go hop on the high seas and go find that at some point because yeah. I'm definitely, uh, I definitely want to watch it. It looks, it looks great, and it looks like everything that, like, mm -hmm. like, like, like everyone I trust, who it, people I trust have told me it's great, and I trust you, and you told me it's great. So that's just Plus, another yeah. one. So like, <laughs> yeah, it's it's a sick, it's a sick show. Really enjoyed it, um, and it's pretty short too. Like, it's like ten episodes, nine, ten episodes. Oh wow! Okay. Yeah, they're they're all like an hour, I assume, something like that. Yeah, they're like I can't remember, maybe like forty something minutes into an hour. Yeah, it sounds about right. Mm -hmm. Sounds about right. Yeah, bro. What about you? What was the last like show movie you saw? I know you um, like you literally do this, so you have probably seen mad <laughs> shows, movies in the past <laughs> recently. We were we we were talking about this off camera but um for anybody who's been a not even a long time listener but like i finally started snowfall <laughs> like like I like around to. the it's 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 good so far because like around the time the finale happened i had like four five six guests in a row who were like i've been watching snowfall i've been watching snowfall and i'm just like yeah. Ugh, all right like i like because I've, I've been meaning to tap in forever and mm -hmm. it was i was like it's finally time let me just do it um i'm halfway i'm halfway through season two right now um okay. I, I, think, I, I think i've been watching for like a week and a half something like that and um, you know like it's it, it's it's really good like i get it i get i get why people were so were so up on it um franklin saint's a horrible person but he's an incredible character um dams and idris is put, he put his whole ankle into doing everything he needs to do um, oh ankle <laughs> yeah, it's fuck crazy. a foot. We're we're talking yeah. ankles over here. <laughs> you need the ankles um, there, like <laughs> high key. Um, fucking uh, the one thing I wasn't expecting to be as crazy as it is is like all the music, like all the fucking needle drops they do in there, just like all, all just just like all the classic R and B, classic yeah. fucking like like fucking like classic 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 rap music, like like early shit, like fucking oh. um. 
you know, they, like, like I just didn't expect, I mean, it's a John Singleton production and like, he's still alive at this point and still very much like working on the show. So it mm -hmm. makes sense that he would have a team of people who were like really on, like, we need this song in here. You know, like there's, there's a scene at the beginning of season one where Franklin gets robbed and he gets his ass beat in front of his car to the tune of fucking Bill Withers lovely day. And it's one, it's, it's, it's That's like hard. one of the, it's, it's, it's kind of crazy. Like yeah. just, just in the, like, I'll never listen to that song the same way again. You know? It, oh it, yeah, for sure. Cause like, cause it was that, cause, cause like there's, there's, there's now two things I think about, or three things, because A, that song, is, it's a perfect song. Nothing wrong with it. Oh, you play it amazing. At, you play it at any moment, and it's perfect. But, like, the the other time um, I saw it in a movie or a TV show was, uh, you ever see 127 Hours, the James Franco movie about the guy who gets his arm caught under the boulder? No, nah, that sounds um, wild. Go watch it. It's pretty okay. good. But, um, uh, but, you, but... <laughs> So there's a scene in the movie of spoilers for this 10 year old movie. Um, yeah. There's a, there's, there's a scene in the movie where bro realizes that he's not about to get up out this rock anytime soon. And he pees into his water bottle and like drinks the pee. <laughs> and like, and like, and like they do, they do it where like they have the camera inside the bottle and you're like watching the liquid get sucked up through the straw. And oh. it's just like Bill Withers' is lovely day playing while this guy drinks his own piss. It's one of the craziest things I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> I've never seen anything like it. That is, yeah, that's that's actually insane. And also, <laughs> I feel like that just fits perfectly. Just like having a scene that's so outrageous and not a lovely day <laughs> with a lovely day happening. Right. Like, mad fitting. Um, yeah, no. Nah, juxtaposition of that. Right. I'm yeah, no, nah, I'm big, I'm big on like musical irony and all that good shit. So that that's like that really stuck out for me. And um what else? Cause it cause it's snowfall. Um my partner and I have been watching hella fucking drag race the last two weeks. Um because sure. cause like I cause I've watched drag race before and I really and I really enjoy it. I've been I've been involved here and there in drag culture over the course of my life in various ways that maybe I'll get into another day. But um Perfect. you know like but but like RuPaul is the most extra human being on planet Earth and it makes mm -hmm. it, it just makes everything funny. I don't know. Like I just I just I just love the I love the art and dedication and just like the like it like it requires so much work to be like good at drag and just like watching people cuz cuz like most reality shows most reality shows are like they're so focused on like the do the best you can within like this time frame but on drag mm -hmm. race it's just like take your time make it look perfect and it's never like oh like we're gonna laugh at you because you suck like it's like nah like you're here to give us your best every round and yeah. i appreciate that like kindness and like that like let's let everyone look their best as a but then again it's also like if you fuck up it's on you as opposed yeah. to like oh i only had 20 minutes i only had 20 minutes to put on foundation you know like that <laughs> like that type of shit but um yeah uh, that's real yeah no nah, but i but yeah it's it's a uh, i've never watched this much of it at one time and it's been it's it's just been a nice way to like turn my brain off and just you know watch 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 the queens do mm. their work that's yeah um, that's facts <laughs> I gotta um but real quick I gotta I gotta look through my letterbox and see if I could find what was the last what was what was the last what was the last movie I saw? Oh the last movie I watched was Akira. Damn yeah the last movie yeah. I watched was Akira. Oh shoot, how was that? It's amazing. Um it's the um Akira is the movie that like I don't it, it's, not, it's not the movie that got me into anime, but because like cause, because, like, I had been watching, like, all, like, the basic shit from, like, when we were kids before that. So I was already mm -hmm. into anime. But, like, Akira was, when I was in high school, I saw it at my man Harry Field's house. Shout out to Harry if you're listening. Um, mm -hmm. we, we, uh, we watched Akira one night, and I was like, oh, like, this is what, like, you know, like, this isn't, this isn't just, like, it's not just, like, Dragon Ball Z. Like, mm -hmm. like, it really, it really opened it really opened my mind to like the possibilities of not just what anime could be, but like what like animation in general could be. Cause like, it's, it's mm. like this, you ever seen Akira before? I haven't. No. 
go find yeah, it so when I, you can. Now I need um, to like yeah, I'm bro. Kind of interested. It's it's like it's it's um like it takes place. It's well, in in context, it takes place in the future. It actually takes place in mm. 2019. Obviously, yeah, we're not in, we're, we're past 2019. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it when movies do shit like that. But like, it takes place in tw- it takes place in Neo Tokyo. Um, or, um, OG Tokyo was destroyed in an explosion that I don't want to spoil. Um, mm. and it's just about like it, it's about these two biker gangs that are kind of fighting for supremacy in the streets of Tokyo, and this uh this like secret government organization that's like housing these uh these like psychic old children. Like they're like literally mm. like. They they got like Benjamin Buttons syndrome or something. They're all like yeah. they're, they're, they're like little children, but like their faces are wrinkled and they got white hair. They call them espers, and like okay. they give they give them these they give them these drugs that unlock like psychic um, um, um psychic abilities. And one of the biker gang kids starts to develop the abilities on his own. It's it's like it's one of the most beautiful, beautifully animated things I've ever seen in my life. It's like like. They don't like. I hate to say it like this. They don't make them like that anymore. They really, really, really don't. Like it's, it's truly, like you could just tell how much. Uh, you could just tell how much work went into like went into making, like just like just like rendering the detail on it. And I'm a big sci-fi person, so like you know it's, it's oh, okay. Because um um there's there's been a sound from the movie that was trending on. It's been trending on TikTok for like a month, and I heard it enough that I was like, you know what? I think it's time to go back and watch Akira. It's been like 15 Word. years, and yeah. it's 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 just it's timeless. I don't know what to say. Go I mean, go watch, watch it now. Yeah, Please. I'm literally about to do that. Like, like either today or tomorrow. <laughs> I'm just gonna like take a little a little time watch that joint. That yeah, no. Nah. If you want to, if you if you want to watch Japanese children maul each other to like industrial music, that's basically what Akira is. So go watch that; it's great. <laughs> wow. All right, bet. <laughs> um. So Swank, for you, what what what's the first movie experience you can remember having? It could be at the theater. It could be at your cousin house. Yeah. First Definitely thing that comes to mind: The Incredibles. Ooh, which actually good choice. Says a lot. It says a lot because the soundtrack of The Incredibles is still today like some of my favorite music. Even because it also just like put me on like I was like four or five years old just to like jazz music in general. I was just like, "Yo, this joint is like so fire," and it just like complimented like I just love superheroes too. It just yeah. complimented like the whole movie in general. So I feel like. I really also just mess with like really fire soundtracks with movies. Mm-hmm. Um, Cause like in middle school, I was just really into just like John Williams and like all these like movie composers. And that was more when I was just like playing a lot of classical piano and stuff. Right. Um, but yeah, the Incredibles was, was it for me. I could definitely oh. say. Man, like I haven't thought about the soundtrack to the Incredibles in a hot ass minute, but yeah, it's like, so yeah, like, it really, it, yeah, like it really is just like nothing but jazz. Like the whole, mm-hmm. you know, like the whole aesthetic of the movie is so like, is so like 1940s, 50s art deco yeah. anyway. And like the jazz music just fits in there perfectly. Um, Perfect. But like, but like I remember seeing the first seeing the trailer and just like hearing like the horns and just and 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 um and just like the sticks hitting the hi hats and I'm just like this is it's so, so fire. Weird. Like you know, like I I didn't have the language to talk about it because I might have been. Incredibles was like what, like oh three, oh four, yeah, might have been oh four or something, yeah, yeah. So I might have been like eleven or twelve. Like yeah. I, I didn't have like the language to describe it, but I was like, this sounds like super jazzy, and like it was, yeah, it was exactly. It was like I, I had never really seen nothing like that, at least not in like a, not a, I mean like not a modern context because like it's not the movie's very like retro, like that's like the whole mm-hmm. aesthetic, but like. I guess in like a modern context in the sense of like a movie that came out in like 2003 or whatever year it was. Yeah. Um, and just like the character designs and like everything about Frozone and Syndrome. Ooh, and like Frozone this, is the goat. <laughs> he's incredible. He's yeah. Yeah. Cute. Like the scene, the scene where the two of them are in the bank and he drinks the water and the cops are about to, she's like, I just need a glass of water. Iconic. Incredible. Like, iconic. <laughs> like that movie just has so many like crazy iconic scenes. That just like I feel like built a lot of my personality like as a as a little kid, <laughs> just like outlandish and just mad funny. Right. What else? What else can you think of that like really stuck to you from the movie? 
I'm curious. Um, now. Dang, what else stuck to me? Literally, just like Dash in general. I just love Dash because I feel like yeah. I just wanted to be Dash when I was a little kid. Just like running around, just being mad outlandish, being like quick witted. Um, but yeah, like the every character just had like really cool, just like development and was just mad like specific. And I just remember like liking that um, and how everyone was just like mad interesting. And I kind of related to like my own family because I have a sister, an older sister, mom yeah. and dad. So I was just like, yeah, this this feels like my life. Like I'm Dash and my family's the Incredibles, like <laughs> which I thought was late. <laughs> and we all like play music because my parents are musicians. So it's right. like, yeah, we're like the modern day black incredibles. <laughs> Low key. That's um, beautiful. I love to hear that. Especially yeah. since Frozone's like barely in the movie. Like he like his scenes are so his scenes are so memorable, but like I I, I watched it again recently. He's barely in the yeah, movie. Yeah, he's real he's not really in that joint. Um yeah. But he's more in was he more in Incredibles too? I can't remember. He he was in it even less in the second one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately. Oh, no. it, it it is what it is. Like it's it's not yeah. like a it doesn't make the movie bad. It's just, it's just a thing mm. I noticed on um <laughs> now that I think about it, this the when I saw I saw the second movie in theaters with um I'm, I'm with two of my friends and uh mm -hmm. <laughs> beforehand there was this uh you know sometimes like Pixar will put like shorts before their movies yeah there is there is this one called Bow about like a lady who's uh is she... that the dumpling yeah yeah <laughs> I recently just saw that I'm crying yo yeah bro so, dumpling boy so so you've seen it. So yeah. um you remember so so you remember how it ends with her like eating the little dumpling boy? And remember how like Ooh, fact, I forgot how it ended. I only saw like the first two thirds of it. Mm, okay. So um so I saw it in the theater before they played Incredibles 2. And obviously the theater's full of kids. Like yeah. it's just like kids and their parents type shit. So like it's so, like at the end when she like she raises the little dumpling boy up to be a teenager and then she eats him when he tries to leave the house. When yeah. I tell you that every single person gasped in that theater and you could hear it, like it was so like it's it's like nothing but little kids and you it yeah. was so quiet when that happened. It's it's easily one of the scariest things I've ever seen in a movie. Like I was yeah. like, you're showing this to children right now. Like yeah, I, 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 I never get like that, but I was like, damn, if I was in here with my kid, like I would like <laughs> Like if I was a kid, that would have fucked me up. But like they were, mm. they 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 were they were like low key traumatized, bro. I I could tell. Like it, it was. I forgot it was rough. that happened. That is insane. <laughs> Yo, Pixar be killing me. They just be having like it's mad wholesome. Then they'll just throw something in there and it's just like, oh wow, like y'all just did that. Right, and then it's just like, oh yeah, enjoy Incredibles too. Like <laughs> yeah, and now just <laughs> right like, after, watch this. like. <laughs> Sorry about that, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. no. Nah, yeah, no. Nah, the Incredibles is like um not to dwell on it too long, but I'm I'm thinking about it now. They mm -hmm. they were they originally weren't going to make a sequel. Um like Brad Bird, the director was yeah. like very he was like super opposed to making a sequel for years and then mm -hmm. out of nowhere they were like he was like, eh, "Okay, I I I guess it's time." It just but like considering the fact that the second one takes place like literally minutes after the end of the first one it would have been so much cooler if they did it like two years after or like yeah. three years after as opposed to like like 10 right or after. however long it was like almost 20 damn near because it came out like in the late 20s yeah. I, I forget what year it came out but yeah if they were like yeah. teenagers like violet and dash that could have been really hard right hard fire. yeah nah like the second one was, the second one was cool but it, mm -hmm. it's 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 not as to me not as memorable. It's but not I'm as also iconic. Like, yeah, right. You're definitely I'm, facts. I'm, a, I'm also like not a kid, also. So it's, yeah, 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 you know, Maybe not exactly we younger, the primary audience. Yeah. If we saw when we were younger, we would have been like, oh, like this is crazy, you know. Yeah. <laughs> um. So like, as you get older and you start to have more life experiences and you see more movies, was there a uh, was there a movie that kind of stopped you in your tracks in terms of like, not even so much an artful sense, 
but like mm -hmm. just a movie that you watch and it's like a capital M movie that's like something a little more than just like 90 minutes of entertainment um sheesh that was probably inception <laughs> when i saw mm. inception i was just like oh wow i remember just like the ending of inception where it was just like yeah. the thing spinning and then it just stopped and i was like i remember just sitting there for like five minutes like what just happened <laughs> and then i went <laughs> online i was like ending of inception explained and i was <laughs> which i feel like everyone does and then i just went yeah. down a rabbit hole and i was like bro that was like insane just like on some like thought provoking just not like oh i've just watched a comedy for 90 minutes i feel like that was the one for me right yeah like like son that was that was like a that was like an that was like a defining moment for that era of movie making because i was in college when inception came out and yeah. like everyone on my campus after they like we were all just talking about like oh, not even so much what does it mean but just like the implications that came mm -hmm. with like oh like is he dreaming is he not dreaming do we know does it matter nice. like that was like the that was that that was like the thing at the time um, I mm -hmm. haven't seen I haven't seen Inception since, and I've heard from other people I know who've seen it recently that it that it's not it's, it didn't age super well. But there, mm -hmm. but like, but I, I want to find out for myself at some point because I have a I have a very up and down relationship with Christopher Nolan. I I like him a lot sometimes, and other times I just I I just I can't handle him at all. Yeah, um, that's like, real. Like the Prestige is one of my favorite movies ever, but I really Word. didn't like Tenet. Like I didn't at all. Do that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Dang, okay. That's real. I'm gonna need to check that out too. Um yeah. what didn't you like about it? It was just like slow. It not not even just well no, not 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 that it's slow. I like I like slow stuff. Oh, I'm 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 mm -hmm. I'm uh I'm I'm the odd man out there. I love a I love a good slow movie. It's just like it's so it's so caught up in itself and so like proud of what it's trying to do and it's just like it's just like so dedicated to throwing you off that like parts of it just don't make sense and it's sad because mm -hmm. like the, the the concept's crazy the whole thing is about like like i don't even know how to explain it it's just like it's like reverse time travel in the sense where like it, it's like you know like the whole idea is around like you win the fight by like having the whole thing go backwards and have like the bullet go back into the gun and like fucking like reverse fucking like war see it, it's it's like super cool conceptually and yeah. like the scenes all you know like in, in like a technical sense they all look cool it's just like he was trying so hard to shake people off that it just left a bad taste in my mouth like everything else about it is good but just like the general idea of like I'm gonna make something that's so confusing that you're gonna hate me after it's done. You know, yeah. like that's kind of how it felt to me. He's just trying so hard to like be, trying so hard to be like mysterious and trying so hard to be just like, oh, like you you need to solve this. Like, mm -hmm. bro, I, I I just I just I just I just want to watch a movie about reverse time travel fights and car chases. Like, could you just give me that, Literally. please? Like, <laughs> come on, it doesn't like have to be <laughs> that deep, deep. Like, just give us give the people what they want. Add right. a little bit of you know, uh, what was that? And then and then we'll be chilling. Like, yeah. I feel like it's the same way with music too. High key, I can't even lie. Oh, absolutely. Like that's that's which is real. Yeah, which is a whole another <laughs> a whole another conversation. But you know, it's facts. Yeah, yeah, nah. But for you, yeah, nah. Since we're here already, I mean, I know mm -hmm. both. Your, I know both your parents are musicians, so like, music's kind of been in your life forever. But mm -hmm. like. What, but like when did music become when did music become you, you know like in 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 the same sense like when did it become capital m music as in like oh like this is music what is this you know like yeah i can't lie i feel like that happened like really early i feel like i might have been like 10 or 11 where i just told myself like yo i'm definitely about to do this for the rest of my life like i'm about to be a musician um but yeah it was it was just like growing up every day just like musical instruments everywhere um, my dad like producing stuff my mom singing mm -hmm. so i definitely was just playing all the time since i was like four or five but i think like once i had like 11 years old i was like yo this is what it's about to be i'm about to like make music 
Um, I feel like it might've been around that time where I started like also getting more into jazz too, where yeah. it's just like different sounds and things that were really like inspiring me. Um, but yeah, I also remember, yeah, it was like a pivotal moment, like 11, 10, 11, and also like the beginning of high school. Um, when I saw a video of uh, Corey Henry, this keyboardist, uh, mm -hmm. playing with uh, Snarky Puppy. It was like their viral song in like 2013, 2014, um, where he played like one of the best piano solos of like all time. Um, and in that moment I was like, yeah, I just wanna like, I know the piano, the keyboard is gonna be like the vessel in which I create music. I feel wow. like that was a an important moment in time. Um, I was like, yo, the like the keys is like the coolest instrument of all time. That's when I was like, yeah, this is this is what's going on. Um, yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, because you yeah, because you'd been playing, you'd been playing for like a grip at that point, right? Like you started, you started like mm -hmm. really young. Yeah, really young. It was mainly like piano and drums. Um, and I feel like I was playing way more drums than piano up until like high school. Mm -hmm. um, and then high school was just like, finding people like Corey Henry, Robert Glasper was a huge thing for me yeah. in high school. Like one of his songs from like his earlier trio records was like my alarm for the entirety of like my sophomore year. <laughs> so I feel like his, his harmony and his cadences just like got like stamped into my brain. Um, in high school, and then also people like Herbie and Chick Corea and all these people, um, just finding out new things every day, which was like a very big like discovery point for me, for, like early high school. Um, yeah, it was, it was a good time. Like I was just like learning a lot. Man, yeah, no, like those, yeah, like those years are so special because of that, you know, just like kind of like mm -hmm. discovering, you know, like at least when it comes to like the whole discovery aspect of like stuff you like and, you know, like who's just like who kind of becomes formative for you, especially as you get older, you know, like my, um, you know, like, like, um, I'm like you, my dad, um, my dad is a musician. He used to sing and he used to roller skate or he, like, oh, or, or, like, he still sings in roller skates, but like he used to like do it like professionally. And, um, you know, like he, it's funny because like he put me onto Herbie Hancock, and that's how I first heard Headhunters, which is still one of my favorite things ever yeah. in life. Um, and then I had people like when I went to college, um, I um I knew people in the music conservatory, and they put me on to like they put me on to like Corey Henry and Chikoria. Oh yeah. And you know like and you know like I played um when I was younger I played I also played keys didn't keep at it because I'm yeah stupid. that's real um <laughs> fucking no it, it's like a hard thing keys is just like a challenging instrument yeah um, yeah unless you're like really playing i find that like a lot of people just give it up because it's just like which it is stressful but i feel like playing at a young age just like songs i wanted to play and that i really liked yeah just made me more interested like when i would play a song that i like on the keys it would just make me like hype to keep playing yeah. Um, See that yeah. that's that's exactly it cuz like cuz you know like I'd be you know like I'd be playing like more classical stuff you know like standards and mm -hmm. all that shit in my lessons and I would never practice like I just I I just I just wouldn't do it but but the times that I felt the most compelled to go play the piano was when I was trying to figure out songs I loved at the time like yeah. like two you know like two that I'll never forget that I learned how to play were um uh happy by n-e-r-d from seeing sounds i don't know i i don't know if you're familiar yeah, yeah i'm not hip i don't think so um go listen to seeing sounds is my favorite n-e-r-d album it's i think the third one it's the one with the gorilla on the front okay. the red gorilla on the front um but like i learned how to play happy by n-e-r-d um shit there was another one that like i i was like i was gassed when i learned how to play it yeah but um there was there was this beautiful song from speaking of soundtracks um remember that beowulf movie that came out that was like that that, that was like motion capture animation i think so um what was, there was i don't remember what it was called um there there was this gorgeous song in it um um um, um, um the movie was just called beowulf but um oh, okay the uh there was this gorgeous song in it called a hero comes home that i heard and it's literally just like the most beautiful somber chord 
one of the most beautiful somber just songs it's so simple it's like yeah. a, it's like a, it's like a little fucking like eight measure thing i could play it right now i can like see the keys in my head but oh, like fine. but like i was always more excited i was always more excited to play stuff that like i had heard that i really enjoyed and just wanted to figure out you know yeah. like that's 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 always what got me about it and like and like and that guy goes and that goes double for like i played piano i played bass i played djembe and i sang and like oh, whenever sure. it came to all of that stuff i was always you know like i would you know like i would know the stuff that i needed to know but i was always the most engaged when like you know like with um, i'm like with bass i taught myself how to play uh i taught myself how to play this less claypool song like Word. like in like and I don't, I don't remember how long it took me but like but like i was more excited to do that and and like this uh one of the first songs my teacher taught me was um <laughs> it was uh falling by the white um um I'm by the whitest band alive the whitest boy alive like just mm -hmm. I'll send it to you later it's 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 such, right, a, such a such a beautiful baseline I'm I'm talking too much but I get it I get it that uh <laughs> yeah, that's it now we can go yeah we could talk about this forever I feel like just like fire piano things um. What's that fire one? Um, uh, 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 from Spirited Away, like the main uh, thing. Oh, that is the man. most beautiful piano melody. I can't really sing it right now, but. Yeah, that's <laughs> like stuff like that is just like, bro, that makes me just say piano is the most beautiful instrument for oh. sure all the time like, like it's, it's yeah so not like yeah not nah, piano and bass like any anytime mm -hmm. i hear anytime anytime i hear beautiful chords or just like or just like a really just like tight bass line i'm just like damn why did i give that shit up i gotta i gotta i gotta get back at it right now you know like Facts. i guess so i guess so inspired every time i hear like them two in particular like mm -hmm. there, there's something special about those two to me oh yeah for sure for sure um yeah. and and um and since and since we kind of touched on soundtracks before we move on to more about you um talk to me a little more about like film soundtracks and how like 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 was there ever a period of time where you kind of well no, I don't. I actually don't need to ask that this time because, like, the uh, because, because like where because like where film and music intersect for you is soundtracks. So, like, talk to me mm -hmm. more about talk to me more about some of your favorite soundtracks from when you were growing up, especially. Jeez, literally just like all the classics. Obviously, like Star Wars. Like that was mm -hmm. just the main one. I was just like, yo, this is because I um my dad started me like playing classical music, pretty young too. Um, so I was just playing like Beethoven and Bach and all this stuff. So I really already enjoyed like classical, like Baroque style music. Um, but the way like John Williams just added more like Americana sounding type stuff into classical music, just like nice chords and like key changes and stuff. That stuff was just like amazing. Like um, Superman, that joint too. Mm -hmm. All these like, yeah, George Lucas, you know, um, forget if you did like Indiana Jones, um, but yeah, there's, there's a lot. E.T. even is like so good. Um, and it's yeah, so it simple good. too, you know, like, like the <laughs> E.T. one in particular is like, it's just such a simple melody, but just like the way, just, just, just like taking a simple melody and just building so much around that to really flesh it out. Like, mm -hmm. mm. oh, for sure. Yeah, it was yeah, it was it was a whole lot of that. Just like beautiful simple melodies and just like amazing chords around it. And um a lot of like the Disney soundtracks too. I might butcher his name, but like Michael Giacchino. Uh I forget his name. Um Giacchino. Yeah, he's tight. Giacchino, I love him. okay. He's great. Thanks. He's great. Because he did like up and he did, yeah, Incredibles, Up, um, Ratatouille, like all these like fire, fire soundtracks. So I feel like those were a lot of the joints that kind of got me like from classical to more of like movie jazz and then more after that, more into like jazz, jazz. Um, so yeah, I, I feel like all those were just mad important for me. Just like 
bumping those soundtracks. Um, yeah. Right. There were, um, speak, speaking, speaking of like the transition from like classical and all that fun shit to jazz and everything else. Like mm -hmm. there's two, there's two that always stick out for me. One is the first time you ever see Mo Better Blues. I'm sure you've seen Mo Better Blues before. I, I actually movie. haven't. I've seen oh, Mad really? Blitz, which is insane. I've st I've never seen that. Wow. Um, go fix which that. Which is funny because it's called <laughs> Mo Better. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> which is like, geez. Um, yeah. Like, I'm gonna definitely watch that joint. Yeah, no, nah, cause um um uh one one of the Marsalises, I forget I forget whether it's Branford or his son. Um, mm -hmm. I think, I think, I think it might be his son. They got, um, um, um uh, he wrote a couple of the songs, beautiful, beautiful soundtrack. It's all about Denver. Oh, it might um, be um, um, Branford Marsalis, I think, his brother. I, I think, yeah. Probably was, yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure. But, but, um, but yeah, like, but yeah, like the soundtrack for that was gorgeous. And, um, yeah. I, 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 I was on a Spike Lee kick for a period of time because my dad had all the DVDs. Um, so oh, I watched nice. that and, 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 and that's one that really stuck to me. And then, uh, and then, um, oh, the soundtrack for trying legacy, um, what Daft Punk did with that, just like the, Facts. I love, I love the, I've, I've always been super interested in the mix of like, uh, just like acoustic analog and digital, you know, like they mm -hmm. just, just like, just like the way they took their synth shit and mashed and 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 just like meshed it up with all like the classical elements is just it's still one of the coolest things i've ever heard like it, yeah. it's it sounds so good like and, and 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 like and like the movie is not that good but like the visuals and the soundtrack yes. do so much heavy lifting bro like it's Word. like that's like like that was one of the things that proved to me like the magic of music to amplify a movie like Cause like, cause like that movie mm -hmm. is mid, but it sounds and it looks amazing. Like, Fire. yeah, you know? exactly. <laughs> yeah, I feel um, that. yeah, nah, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a huge Daft Punk fan too. So like, it was, I, I'm like, yeah. I already was at that point. So like seeing them do that was, and, and just like seeing how they did the score up was just like, it, it was, I don't want to call it life changing, but it was, it, it was definitely a moment that I think back on a lot. Like, damn, like that's when I really, that was one of the times when I was older that I really started to pay attention. Like there's mm -hmm. others, but like, that's one that's always, e it, it just comes to me so easily, you know? Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. I gotta, I gotta watch that joint. Like the original, I think I saw the new Tron, but I never saw like the OG one. Um, oh, from the eighties. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's, it's from the 80s, it's, yeah. It's okay. Good. Fire. It's good. Um, I haven't seen it in years, but I um I like it more than I, I like it more than the new one. Like the soundtrack's mm -hmm. not as good, but it's it's like yeah, I, I just, it is what it is. I, I I like it. I like it all. Um, so you know, like, so like so so like from the time, so you started playing music really really young, and you said that you mm -hmm. really started to see it as like this is what I want to do around high school yeah you know and exactly. um i know you went um, um i know you went to laguardia high school mm -hmm. um and did joey badass go to laguardia high school he went to murrow which murrow, is in my brooklyn fault. my dad went to murrow too yeah so it's like a classic brooklyn school um right a lot of fire has heads went there um yeah like a lot of most of pro era I think went to um, Murrow. Um, so it's just like around there, just like Flatbush, Midwood area of Brooklyn. There's just like a lot of, like with the Flatbush zombies too and underachievers, right, right. pro era. Um, kind of all in like where I kind of grew up at, which was really sick. Uh, just seeing like them go crazy. Even though I was really young when they like first started like right, really yeah. taking off, but yeah, it's it's fire seeing people from like your hood just make really crazy music. Um, but yeah, yeah, Joey's Joey's the goat. Yeah, for no, sure. that shit is yeah, yeah, no, that shit is so special. Um, mm -hmm. and then from there, and, and then from there, you went to Berkeley, Boston. Yeah, and you and you did, and you uh, you know, I mean, like it's it's I, I don't need to say much. It's fucking Berkeley, but like Facts. you know. <laughs> Um, when did, uh, you know, so like when, so like, when did you start putting music together on your own that you not even so much that you're proud of, like, that's such a weird mm -hmm. 
thought. Why, why did I even think that? But no, like, that you're really just like, oh, this is my music type. Yeah. Like, yeah. when did you start like uploading shit that you were proud of? Yeah, let's just go I there. Feel like, <laughs> yeah, that's facts. Yeah, I feel like that started like really late high school. That might have been like junior, senior year of high school, just making stuff with like my homies who I still make music with today, like Elijah and Yoshi. Um, and all the dudes, we had like a rap group in high school. I mean, we were just uploading like foolishness onto SoundCloud, <laughs> but yeah, it was, I feel like that was, that was definitely a cool time, like senior year of high school. And then once I hit college is when I really like started producing my own music. I feel like that's when it was just like every day, just kind of try to make a beat. Um, and then like 2018, which is my first year of college, dropped like my first song on mm -hmm. Spotify or whatever, um, called Could Have Been, which is yeah. just like a seven minute, six minute song, <laughs> just like going <laughs> all over the place. But yeah, I feel like I was, that was the moment where I was very proud. Like, yeah, I was very proud of that creation. Just like, oh, I produced this, I mixed it, I mastered it, you know, all this stuff. Right. And you know, like not, to, and you know, like not too long after that, maybe like a couple years after that. So I guess while mm -hmm. you're still in school, you put out, you um, you put out pursuit of. Yeah, that was um, like during COVID. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it was during COVID. Yeah, so we were just like on Zoom, and I just had more free time. So, me and the homie were just like making beats, <laughs> making songs. Um, and they were like, "Yeah, we we got enough to just make a little project, like an EP." me and Tobias so yeah it just kind of came about really organically which is cool it was just like we transferring every day yeah, um, yeah. same thing with like Luke and some things take time it was kind of like around slightly after um but yeah that was that was a lot of like the COVID songs COVID music I feel like right um, mm-hmm yeah, no, nah, yeah, no. Nah, I'm happy. I'm happy you. I'm happy you brought up some things. Take time too, because yeah. like I noticed, because I noticed, or like the first thing I noticed about those two projects is that like they're like heavily collaborative. I mean, like not to say that mm -hmm. More Better isn't heavily collaborative, but like just like in the sense that like it's basically built to the other person working on it. And I mm -hmm. and like and like and like for some reason I didn't think about how much of that I didn't think about the fact that it was happening during COVID. So like. I guess yeah. just like what you, you, I, I mean, like obviously, like you know, like collect, you know, like collaboration just felt like I feel like people just felt more willing to experiment with shit during the pandemic. So like mm -hmm. what? So so I guess like what was it like putting those two projects together like during the height of the pandemic when everyone's still trying to figure out exactly how to do this shit? Dude, I feel like it works to our benefit actually. Just having more time at home and just being able to like sit with things. Like, if Luke would send me drums, I could just, like, sit with it for, like, however long, just mess with it, and then send it back. Um, I feel like it was just, like, no time restraint on anything, which mm -hmm. made it, like, work really well and just really authentic. And also, a lot of those songs, like, they came about in, like, the first song um, that me and Luke made, which was Nothing's Changed with uh, Saba. He literally, uh -huh. he sent me like a drum pack of like 60 drum loops, 60, 70 drum loops. And then like one of the first <laughs> ones I heard, I just played it. I heard it like five seconds of it, ran to the living room, literally recorded keys on it in like 10 minutes, sent it back to him. And then he was like, bro, <laughs> like, this is crazy. I'm about to send it to Saba. And then like <laughs> two days later, he just freestyles over it. So like that song was made yeah. like most of the songs in like a matter of two, um, which is kind of insane. How did how did how did how did y'all get in touch with Saba to make that happen? Like that's like Dude. you know like for that you know, like for that to be like your first album and just like because you know, like Saba yeah. Saba wasn't as Saba wasn't as big then as he is now, but just like mm -hmm. yo like yeah. that's that's not nothing, son. Like literally, yeah, it's crazy because Luke kind of just grew up with in chicago with all like the chicago goats and legends um like no name and saba and felix all these people um yeah. so they kind of like already 
were homies before then just on some like chicago musician type stuff um which is really fortunate because it was just like luke was the chicago kind of scene and i was more of like the new york jazz scene um so we kind of just like merged all of that together um so it was really it was it was sick he literally just texted him just on some homie stuff like yo if you mess with this just see what you think and he was like yo this is fire just rapped over it um which is also cool because that album is just like all the friends and homies who are just down to make cool music it's less like business type i feel yeah. like less like industry business type stuff which is why i feel like that that project is so special because it was just like you know just did it with the homies did it with the friends um yeah which is really sick right you really you really you really can't ask for you really can't ask for more than just like that organic intimate connection and like honestly mm -hmm. that's what i love so much about pursuit of you know like yeah. you know like you, you, you know like li listening listening to like burbank and <laughs> all the all the all, all the all that's the city deep names are the yeah ones that be, like, like burbank washington and harlem were like the three ones that i was stuck on when uh -huh. listening to all of these and like I'm I'm about to ask you the corniest fucking question. Are those are those songs named that because of the feeling that they gave you, or like were they based on the cities, or did it just happen that way? It, it it's funny because actually every beat I think was named after just a city that Tobias made. Like another one was just like L A L A Rain or something, and then another one yeah. was like I forget the name, but yeah, he was just like randomly sending me beats, and some of them were just named after cities. And some of them I kept, like Burbank and Washington. And others I like change it, but I feel like you was just like, oh, let me just name it real quick. <laughs> Thought of the first city you could think of. Yeah, but it's kind of cool because like now I'm thinking like, oh, a lot of these like songs kind of feel like I'm there in a way, um, just from like listening. Um, but yeah, you can you can it could be as deep as you want it, or it could just be like, ah, oh, he just named it, <laughs> like right. he just named it a random city. I am trying to do that though. I'm trying to make like a project just named after like neighborhoods in Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. I feel like that would be like a sick like beat tape name or like a concept. Just like oh, Crown Heights, Flatbush, Bed Stuy, right? Like that. I feel like yeah, that would be hard. Yeah, no, that could be cool as hell. Um, yeah. Have you have have you have you been have you been to those three cities? Have you been? Or, or, or I mean, obviously you've been to Harlem, mm -hmm. but like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. I've been, yeah, yeah. Um, I've been to Burbank. I remember just playing basketball in Burbank like last year, <laughs> which was sick. Mm. Um, yeah, I've been to Washington. I haven't been to like the state Washington, but I've been to Washington D.C. Mm -hmm. So. Um, but yeah, I've, I've been a couple places. Um, hopefully soon we'll be everywhere <laughs> and we'll see, uh, we'll tour Antarctica and Siberia and places, you know? Yeah. Nah. <laughs> yeah. No, nah, y'all gotta, y'all gotta go to, y'all gotta go to Reykjavik and go play Iceland. Like, yeah, yo, know, I'm down. I'm down to go to like the crevices of the world <laughs> and just be playing like the most out music. I feel like that'd be mad fun. Yeah, I love that. You know, like that's, yeah, yeah. You know, like especially, especially since uh, I mean, like the pandemic's not over yet, but like we're mm -hmm. definitely we're 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 safer. I can't even say we're safer. Things yeah. things are just a little bit. Uh, things are just a little bit better now, and we can like move around, and we at least know what's out there, mm -hmm. in, in in a way we did in three years ago. So um, bef before before we move on to more better, like you know, like looking, you know, like especially considering how those two projects came together. Like, how does it feel looking back on them, you know, like considering the constraints you were under and like, you know, you know like, you know, like, what was it like making those versus making a project like more better where like things are a little freer and looser and you can like be around people in a more uh, um, direct capacity type shit? Yeah, I feel like each like environment and like working space for each project just served the album as like it was i feel like it was good that we made pursuit of in the crib and some of the same times like mostly in the crib and some we did in person 
I feel like it just like speaks to the tone of the album. And like, I feel like everything is just like, it happens for a reason. More better is just more like a blossoming, I feel like feeling of an album. And you can kind of hear that in like, you know, just like more collaborations and stuff. And it just feels like moving outwards, I feel like. So yeah, I feel like it, it was it was good that it happened the way it did that I was, we were in the crib and just like sending things back and forth. Um, yeah, and I feel like a lot of more better was <laughs> too, just like in the crib too, like some of those songs I made in 2019, 2022. Um, yeah. So just like a little bit of both, I feel like more better is just like taking pieces from every project, just like each project was like a stepping stone, I feel like. Right. Um, and more better is just like reach the top of the mountain, <laughs> low key. Or you, at least I can see the top of the mountain for more better. Um, yeah, kind of like that. Right. Which um, which songs? Which songs did you? What 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 are some of the oldest songs on more better? Like which ones? Which ones did you yeah. create around 2019, 2020, and which ones kind of sprung? Like, more recently. Yeah. Yeah. Home is definitely the oldest one. I wrote that like in 2016 in high school but it just keeps evolving i feel like so i feel like home is an old one um the joint with malaya and morgan uh called until until made yeah. that like 2020 in right in the middle of covid um let me see some other ones there's some newer ones that are like over now the second to last joint i made that in like january <laughs> i literally like just made that joint <laughs> um yeah so i feel like it's just like bouncing around which is kind of cool just bouncing around like the different time periods of me like creating and making music um yeah and still trying was like 2021 i was just in my bag <laughs> that was just a song where i was just like it's uh, <laughs> like geez um which i felt like it was a fitting end to like the project too um but yeah, it's, it's it's a lot of like bouncing in and out of like time periods. I feel like of my creation, even like um the 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 second part of the reprise with Luke, that was my final for my production class at Berkeley. No <laughs> shit, that's crazy. <laughs> I literally just took my like final where the the theme for that for my final was like I gave everyone paintings of like Basquiat pictures yeah and it was like everyone should just improvise what they feel when they see the painting and then we just like played free for like 15 minutes and i just took like a portion of that that's so loose <laughs> i yeah. love i love that that's that's so great yeah it was it was it was pretty sick it came out like really cool and i was like dang this would be cool to like put on this album because it sounds great um so yeah there's just like little snippets and tidbits i feel like just from everywhere in my musical journey from the past like five or so years which i feel like is really cool just a culminating thing i love yeah. i love i love a good culmination you know i was oh, yeah. um i was i was just speaking to cleo reed um last week about something that right. y'all will see later it's it's completely different from anything else i'm doing right now but um yeah. she mentioned she mentioned that uh she mentioned that root cause her project kind of came together in a similar way she like made it over the course of her time at school and she would just mm -hmm. like be in places and just like jot an idea down and then record it and just like you know like you know like you're like 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 the two of y'all in particular or you know yeah. like you're, you you know you're both like you're both rappers and singers and producers and multi-instrumentalists and just like the way that y'all you know like you know like people like y'all always see the world different because you're like mm -hmm. you're like you you have you have that you have that knowledge of every of every side of this shit in a way mm -hmm. that other people don't which isn't a bad thing it's just like a different it's just like a different, different perspective, perspective. And, and and it's just and it's just one of the things that makes your music really uh you know, like really engaging in that way. And another thing, another thing I noticed, you know, like compared to your first two, your first two projects and more better is like, 
you know, like a lot of a lot of the a, like a lot of the music on those first two projects really do feel like they like it really does feel like straight ahead beat music made with like mm -hmm. live instruments and and like jazz and like interpolations and shit like that. And then you yeah. listen to more better and there's way more just like straight ahead jazz on it, you know, like mm -hmm. stuff that you, you know, you know, like stuff that you might hear on a Robert Glasper album or on yeah. like a Chikoria project, you know, like stuff like stuff that stuff that's definitely not blurring the lines as much. Obviously, there's still stuff that's like, you, you, you know, you'll go from a song that sounds that's like a whole suite and then mm -hmm. you just go to something that's just like you rapping over like a beat and then yeah. it's back to it again. And then there's something that's like a little mix of both. But like, you know, you really you know, like I feel like you really leaned more into like this is me as like this is me as like a performer. Like this is me doing something more traditional, but I can still do the other shit, but I could do this, too. You know, like you're nice. like really showing, you, you know, like there's less uh, not to say that there's more of a divide between the two, but it's just like this is this. This is that. Here's a blend. This is this. This is that. Here's a blend. Yeah. And I like. I Literally. like that. Was that, was that was that was that intentional? Like, did you go in wanting to do that or did it just come out this way? Yeah, some of it was definitely intentional. Kind of just on some like, yo, this is <laughs> I am able to like make music that sounds like this and sounds like that. Other it was just like uh, just try to make music how I felt it should sound in that moment in time. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Like, yeah, I was just like trying to find a lot of inspiration from you know, I guess just all my favorite records and what they did and how they like blended sounds and genres and things. I mean, the most important one being like probably to put a butterfly. Sounds um, about right. Yeah. Um, and just like how, and literally because like Kendrick worked with all the best jazz musicians of the generation, like yeah, you know, Robert Glasper, you know. All these Harris Martin, yeah, yeah, Harris yeah. Martin, you know, Spud, um, Kamasi Washington, from, yeah, Kamasi Washington, literally like every amazing musician of like the generation above me or like a generation and a half, whatever. Um, so I was like, yeah, let me try and like just make something like that feels like that, but just more like me and more just like Brooklyn and more young and more just like, yeah can like relate to people who i just hang out with on a regular basis like i really yeah i feel like that's a move just making something relatable that people are just like oh i like understand what he's doing and then some stuff sounds a little foreign so it's just like a little bit of like oh that's fire but then the gears are kind of turning a little more than usual right. i feel like that's always like a move just musically I try to like get get across. Yeah, definitely. I could tell because you know, like obviously, this project doesn't sound like a dissertation or anything like that. Like this <laughs> isn't like this, this isn't like boring or anything like yeah. that. But you know, but but you know, like I feel like I feel like in general, not everybody, and I and I feel like people are less like this now. But there's still kind of like a general consensus that like, you know, like there's the whole like, oh, you're however old it's time for jazz you know like there's still kind of that there's still kind yeah. of that um there's still kind of that like cloud hanging over the whole genre for a certain type of person you know mm -hmm. but like but like obviously there's so many artists who you, you know like not just you or people like cleo or people like terrace martin mm -hmm. or shit um i didn't spill it now, did I? Oh no! <laughs> a little bit. Sorry, my fault. Um, <laughs> I just I spilled like a tiny bit of smoothie on the floor. I'll get it later. But um, <laughs> um, but you know, like just just like just like the idea of something like to pimp a butterfly that managed to like bridge the gap between jazz and rap for like a whole generation of people. Like there are people mm -hmm. I still talk to today who like didn't not that they didn't realize, but like they needed something that was like relatable, you know, and like that's mm -hmm. like that's like an extremely relatable album in almost every possible way, you know, yeah. but like, it's, uh, you, and, and, you know, like your music, you know, your music just feels so, it feels so loose and so relaxed, like a lot of the best jazz does. And it feels lived in, you know, like, there's, mm. you know, like there's like atmosphere and personality and like geography and like, just like yeah. presence in your music that makes it like, 
you know, it's not, it, you know, like, it's not just, uh, it's not just like notes flying around. It's like, there's mm -hmm. smells and tastes and like, just like sensation that comes the goal. from that music, you know? And like, and you're like, espe especially when you're, especially when you're on your rap shit, which like, I know obviously you're a huge fan of Mike and Navy Blue. Like, I mean, like everybody yeah. is at this point. Oh, for sure. But like, yeah, you know, like, it's, you know, like, that's just like, you, you know, like, that's like also like being your style, you know, like that's, mm -hmm. th this is, this is, this is the type of shit you've been on. And, you know, like, there's really no, mm -hmm. There's like no better moment than now to like fully embrace that, you mm -hmm. know. Like it, it's uh, it's it's honestly been beautiful to see how many people have taken that particular like, you know, like self improvement. Fucking like I'm a work on my better self. Let me just be raw as shit over some fire instrumentals type shit and just yeah. like you know like it, it's like it very much feels like you. Like this is this this is Cisco Swank to me. And Thanks. I feel like, like this I is like me it. in like my truest form, basically. Um, and definitely, yeah, what you said about just like feeling lived in, like the music. <laughs> like a lot of this music like I came up with or just like heard and wrote, just like walking or biking around Brooklyn or New York. And I feel like it just, just feel like you, you listen to the music and you understand where it's coming from mm -hmm. and just like the places and feelings and things. Um, so yeah, I appreciate it. Thanks so. Yeah. Just trying to make like really authentic, you know. Just wanted to feel like 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 you're here. <laughs> like you're you you've been where I've been. You know, you've been on the train at like three AM. <laughs> mm -hmm. Like you know, it's just feelings like that. Um and I really try and like tra uh, like translate that also just like harmonically and sonically too. Um just I feel like Robert Glasper does that really well and just like in certain cadences and the ways he moves chords just evoke like certain feelings. I've definitely like spent a lot of time just trying to like tap into that uh, and different like chord progressions too. Um, not only just like lyrically, but just like sonically, like, oh, how does this make the listener feel? So I try to like tap in a lot on that level on this album too, which I feel like makes it even more dense uh, now, so yeah. Right, and especially considering that this is coming from, you know, like almost five years worth of time. You know, like mm -hmm. this is like this. Is, yeah, this is like snippets of you from between 2019 and 2023. You know, like yeah, you know, like you know, like like you like you said, like there are two songs on here that were made four months ago, five months ago. Exactly. You know, like that's like that's uh that's like it like it's like it's difficult it's difficult to put sounds together from over the like from such a you know, like four years isn't that long of a time, but it's a long time. Yeah. You know, like put it Facts. putting stuff together from putting stuff together over the course of four years and having it flow like you made it all in two weeks <laughs> is no not an easy is not an easy thing to do yeah it's, you know, it's definitely like to, a task it's definitely like, just like taking like little cloths and just sewing it together i feel like that's kind of what i was trying to be on damn well like how you know like how did you feel how did you, or, or or like talk to me about when it was finished I mean, like, I feel, I feel like you still might even be working on it a little bit, but like, Bro, when it I'm, was like, I'm always working, <laughs> always yeah. just changing and perfecting. But yeah, when it was finished, it was definitely just like, dang, like this just this just happened. It just took a second to just like listen all the way through. Um, and yeah, it was it was. I always can, <laughs> I always compare like dropping or like finishing a project to like giving birth without any of the pain of giving birth <laughs> with any without any of the physical pain there could be like some emotional pain you know but oh for sure yeah it's just like literally you're you're slaving away at this at creating and developing this art for months and months or years and then like once you drop it it's still yours technically um but it's like now it's just for the listener um, and I feel like it's it's just like a crazy feeling, just like dropping, especially just like a a larger scale project. Um, but yeah, you know, 
I'm I'm hyped though. I'm, I'm very excited. Yeah, nah, as you should be. You know, like it's 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 like you, you know you really do. You know, like you're giving that to the world, and you know, like people are gonna interpret it however they interpret it, and that's a beautiful mm. thing and a scary thing. But you know, Thanks. like. You know, uh, just just because we're on the subject, are you the type of person? Are you the type of person who likes to have like a very not so much rigid, but just like a structured way of like, this is how you should take this in, or do you just kind of like put it out and it's like, what do you think of this? Like, 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 yeah. like you prefer one or the other, or do you not care? Dang, I I don't really care. I'm kind of like easygoing. Like, I'll just give it out and see what happens <laughs> that's kind of like my vibe just like right. go with the flow um but yeah i guess it, it could it could depend just on like the what i'm dropping or maybe what the song or whatever i'm dropping means to me and i'll be more like specific on how i want it to be received but usually i'm just like you know if i mess with it winston yeah winston marsalis said that too and like a an interview he was someone asked him uh which is more important the listener or the creator of the music then he was like the creator is the first listener and that's literally all he said and i was like oh <laughs> that's that is actually really facts so yeah. i feel like as long as i mess with it that's all that matters right know? that's that's okay. deep without be that's that's deep without trying too hard to be deep yeah, and I love you, that. You, you know, feel, just like, yeah, <laughs> it's like mad profound, just in the chillest way. Um, but yeah, yeah, not nah, like that's like you know, like stuff, you know, like stuff like that is the stuff that really lands and connects. Like, just um, <laughs> I had, I had, um, I had my OG uh, Dar Adams on here a couple weeks and near a couple weeks ago, and when and when we ended the episode, he said something that like I've really been thinking about for the last like two weeks. He said like the only things that don't grow are dead. You know, like stuff Ooh. like that. I'm just like, like he said that, and I like, re I like, I had a physical reaction when he said it. Yeah. Like, and I and I haven't stopped thinking about that. It's like that so simple, and it's not like labored or anything. It's just like, damn, like it just felt it's just like. Real. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's a quote. That's insane. Like yeah, yeah like it, it's I I, I I love little I love little earworms like that that you know like I'm sure and, and like those and like those only come from like experience and just like they'll, mm. they'll just be a thing you think it, it, it's it's not one of those things that you're gonna like labor over for 20 minutes to try like oh like oh like figure out this cool thing to say i don't know it's just like a thing that just comes so naturally and i could tell by the way he said it that it just came so naturally like mm -hmm. damn um, oh for sure and yeah. like man and like you know the whole like jazz and rap have been intertwined together since rap first began you know mm -hmm. like it, it's 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 always been there but i don't always i don't often get the chance um to talk to someone who kind of comes at it from i mean like i know you like grew up listening to rap but like you grew up mm -hmm. like playing you know like you grew up playing jazz and like being very well versed in it like through yeah. your family um you know like i'm thinking um, 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 I already said it before, but you know, like even just like comparing things between like the pursuit of and um, your first album just sounding so much like straight ahead beat music made by putting jazz elements together and more better featuring more just like straight jazz. Like I love, yeah. I love that. I love that dichotomy. And I love, uh, I love just like, I love the parallels between those two things and just like taking the opportunity to show how they come together, but show like how they're also like these two separate entities yeah, separate that things. inform the, yeah, yeah, the, like inform the whole, you know, like as someone, as someone who grew up listening to and playing both jazz and rap music, mm -hmm. um, what do you feel makes them so complementary to each other? You know, like what, yeah. you know, like, you know, like why do you, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I feel like, it, it just all comes from the same place. Like, I definitely have thought about that before. Like, I feel like the same thing that I feel when I'm like, I'm listening to like Playboy Cardi is the same thing I feel when I'm listening to like A Love Supreme by John Coltrane. Hell I feel yeah. like it's a very similar thing that comes from a lot of just like rage and a lot of just like 
release. And I think it's just like, it's so similar, even though it's just like sonically sounds different. Um, it's just literally all just like the black experience and just like black American music too. So I feel like, oh, let me just like interweave a lot of that. And same thing with gospel music, like shout music and the and the density and of uh-huh. when someone's just like praising. That's all literally like if you think about it, it's just the same exact feeling. Because I've been in like I've been in crazy moshes. I've been in like church. I grew up in church, so. And just right. like playing in the most intense, like tipping jazz club. Um, I feel like it's just all very similar feelings eternally. So it's in a way, even though it's it's kind of challenging, it's very, it makes sense to merge these sounds together because it's coming from the same place. Right. And man, we man, I didn't even touch on the gospel aspect because there's de- be- yeah. because because there's definitely quite a bit of gospel in there. Mm-hmm. Like 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 did you um um did you play in church growing up or did you just go? Yeah, I played in church. Both of my parents, my dad is like the director of music. He still is at a couple of churches in Brooklyn. Oh, um, wow. and okay. led the choir. And my mom led like the youth choir and stuff um in church and my parents met in church too which is kind of Mm. crazy my dad was teaching the choir my mom was singing in the choir which is (laughs) mad mad cool but yeah it was just a lot of just like i was in church like four out of the seven days of the week basically four or five days so it's a lot of you know that plays a big part in just musicality and also just the whole theme of just like music being more than just notes and harmony just mm-hmm. like <laughs> meaning something and standing for something just more and just like using music as a vessel to be like you know there's something bigger than myself right i feel like that played an important part just like growing up being like oh yeah music can like help people it could also just be like lit <laughs> we could just be turning up yeah like, you know you, you know it's it plays a lot of roles which i feel like is really cool um, but yeah, it's, it's definitely, I feel like what church helped in, in the grand scheme of things, uh, just like meaning in general. Right. Yeah. yeah nah, I get it. Cause I, um, um, I was, um, I went to church until I was probably about 10 or 11 years old. And then mm-hmm. I stopped, um, my parents actually gave me the option to keep going or stop if i wanted to and i was like i don't really i'm not really feeling yeah this. You're just, I'm but, chilling. but but the whole time i was there i always really loved i mean like i still love gospel music to this day it's like and, mm-hmm. and you're like it's 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 just like like you said it's just all about the feeling of it you mm-hmm. know like it's just all yeah it's just like all about the feeling that comes from you know like i don't i, I don't even think about the religious aspect of it anymore it just sounds gorgeous and yeah. it's like really like facilitating that feeling and musicality and like there are so many people i know who came up in the church and that's how they started singing or that's how they started playing piano that's, you know like that's like you know like that's uh that's like that's like undeniable you know mm-hmm. and uh i guess like i guess before i ask you my very last question here like like considering the fact that th- that like your music is such a mix of like rap jazz gospel like how would you describe the music that you make you know like i feel yeah. like there's so um, much in there like what 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 do you what how would you describe what you do <laughs> that's such a good question i feel like i literally always just say it's just black music like i just make black music i just make black american music which is stole r&b hip-hop jazz gospel um even like rock because you know, we, we made rock too, you know? Yeah, we did. And I started like delving into that more in this album too. Cause I never really made anything that was more alternative, like indie type stuff. So, um, hear a little bit more of that too. But yeah, I, I feel like it's just black music, just black American music. I love um, that. Yeah. Cause like you, 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 yeah, like you're not wrong at all. And, um, mm-hmm. I mean like now that you brought it up, like what, um, like I'm trying to think back on some of the songs, but like talk to me about kind of putting that, putting putting that like harder rock or like alternative spin on it, yeah. and like what um, like which songs in particular do you feel like it's strongest on? Yeah, I feel like definitely one of the first singles, "All the Same," 
which is more like like grooving like alternative and that all started because just like i started just listening to so much like dijon and like gene dawson mm -hmm. uh and just like cool black alternative artists um i don't know if you know like hello yellow they're also really sick i do know hello um, yellow yeah. yeah they're so fly so i was just like bumping a lot of their music and i was just like they i'm really trying to just incorporate just different stuff as long as it just feels good i feel like i should i should get it in there um mm -hmm. but yeah all the same and then uh there's a song called changes with uh my homie laura uh yeah. Yeah. that's definitely very much on some like phoebe bridgers like sad <laughs> but just like in your, in your <laughs> like sad boy type music um but that's one of my favorite songs that i've literally like ever written um because it's definitely just like very indie but still i feel like it's staying true to just like harmonically the type of music that i make um yeah i feel like those two for sure just like pushing more on that side uh of the genres right and yeah and yeah it's like once again like that mixture is just what makes it's just like what makes this project so interesting and so uh i'm like and like it feels so warm too like i mm. feel I, like I, like i feel like that's such a no never mind it's warm it sounds it sounds nice yes. it sounds it, it sounds like spring and summer music you know, like I'm really excited to really like yeah. dig into it as it starts to get warmer and like and just like consistent, like you know, it's just like stuff like that and like not not to not to not to go too off track, but like I remember when the first No Worries album came out and it came out in like yeah. October or November, and I was so mad that it didn't come out in the summer because I was like, yeah, because I was like, like I'm, I'm, I'm not, music. I'm not, right like i'm not trying to listen to this when it's like 31 degrees outside i want to hear this when it's like nice. 82 i'm in like a nice button down in a park sipping on some mango lemonade like that's oh, what yeah. that's what that sounds like to me and that's what this sounds like to me hey, you know like go. this this sounds you know like you know like this sounds like being like posted up on like a lamp post with like a c and c <laughs> type music for me you know that's like hard. that's that's i like that about this right Oh, thanks. Um, yeah, it's it's definitely meant to be just like feel good music, especially just like spring summer, you know. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and like and and, and you know, to, to like to wrap this up, um, Cisco Swank. If your life was a movie, what would it be about? Ooh, if my life was a movie, it would just be about getting through the trials and tribulations of life but chilling with the homies <laughs> i feel like that's that's the whole thing it would just be like a whole lot going on which as long as long as you got the homies and the family uh yeah that's it's, it's gonna be all right and just a lot of shenanigans <laughs> the movie is just gonna have so like so many random shenanigans um but a great ending it's gonna have a mad corny great ending <laughs> where we all like jump in the air with like our fists up and paw in the screen paw it's frozen yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's like that's i feel like that's that's gonna be the movie um but then it's gonna have like a scene with like a bad guy comes back and then it's gonna end like ah i came back and it's gonna be like ah sequel <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. so it'd be like kids but a lot less intense yes literally yeah, yeah that's what it's gonna be on for sure damn that's, sorry i'm chewing that's, that's, that's but, oh no you're chilling <laughs> yo yeah no nah, like that's like we all need a little corniness in our lives sometimes you know it's it's, 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 it's like right. it's like unavoidable you know yeah it's fine you know like, yeah. you know, like nine sure. times out of ten that just means you're being pure to yourself and, and true to yourself that's, like for sure fuck it oh, um dude. bro thank you so much like this of was course. great. <laughs> yeah this is mad fun this is sick thanks for having me no nah, man it's my pleasure you know like i like like i feel like i say this a lot but you know like that you know like the intersection of these two different things really brings so many dimensions out of this music and like every conversation i have with people about their interests really tells me more about them and about the art they make and you know like mm -hmm. you know it's like considering 
that your music is like, you know, like five or six different kinds kind of rolled together under one, you know, like very beautiful black umbrella. Like you just felt like a perfect fit, you know, like, and um, I just, yeah, you know, like I, you know, like you're, you, you know, like you're, you're a real solid dude who makes dope music and I just appreciate your time, you know, like it, it means a lot. <laughs> appreciate you. This is, this is sick. You know, I'm just happy to be here creating cool stuff with the homies. Just trying to make interesting music. I feel like that's the goal. Right. Uh, yeah. You know, one day at a time. It's all you can do. Son, one, yeah, one day at a time, every time. Like, <laughs> literally, literally. Thanks for listening. Shout out to y'all for making it this far. And shout out to all the black people listening too, because y'all really impeccable. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and tell a friend to come through next time. One.